Rod Kimball lives in the shadow of his successful, respectable father, who was a stuntman for Evil Knievel. He wanted to grow and follow in the footsteps of his father, becoming a famous stuntman. His group of burnout friends and him are seen first recording one of his many stunt attempts, which, like many others, is a failure. He puts on his getup and revs up his bike, only for the ramp to bottom out beneath him as he goes flying, face first into the top of the van that he was supposed to be jumping over, only to be thrown further over the side into the next ramp. Rod thinks he's a lot more popular and cooler than he is, as the neighborhood kids drive around with him, but ultimately end up just watching. His group of friends, insular as they are, go out to grab food, leading with a jelly bean competition. One of his friends crashes and burns, trying to flirt with the cashier, while another friend finds some fireworks off screen. The fireworks are limp, and Rod and his stepbrother go home on his motorbike. Rod has a tumultuous relationship with his stepfather, Frank, who does not respect Rod as a man, mocking his fake mustache and inability to grow facial hair and his dreams of becoming a stuntman. Frank beats Rod once again, seemingly effortlessly, as Rod struggles to keep up with him. After crashing and falling in the bushes, he has to take the garbage out. He stands and sees Denise, who has returned from college. Rod stumbles through the interaction, but invites an obviously interested Denise to watch him jump over the pool right before insulting her and running away. Rod and his friends go to the pool the next day for Rod's event. Dave is distracted by a man trying to join their crew, who tries and fails to entice them by dancing. It doesn't work. Denise soon shows up, and Rod is ready to impress her with his stunt but he suffers from another failed attempt, despite trying to channel a fox spirit animal. Walking back home, dripping wet, Rod learns that his stepfather is ill and likely to die soon because he can't get a life-saving transplant to help his heart, as he's too high risk for his insurance. As it turns out, he's been sick for 21 years, and no one felt Rod could handle the news. He's upset because he won't be able to kick Frank's ass if he's dead. Frank continues to rile Rod up, teasing him about his manhood while he admits the transplant will cost $50,000. Rod promises to save up enough money to save his stepfather, smashing a lamp in frustration. Rod runs to his quiet place in the woods, dancing and hyping himself up in a dance montage. He ends up tripping and falling down the side and rolling down the cliff until finally ending up in the bushes quite a way down below. It inspires him, despite the outcome, as he sees a billboard for a jump. He meets with his crew afterward, painting a picture for them of their plan. He wants to do the most significant jump the town has ever seen, 15 buses, which he explains is one more bus than Evil Knievel jumped. Dave goes to work and they follow him around as Rod explains the plan to them step by step. They need to raise the money for the jump first so they can raise money from the bus jump to save Frank's life. Rod later uses a mirror to catch Denise's attention, luring her into his garage to brag about the plan to save Frank. He tells her he knows she wants to join the crew, and he acts like she's the one who came up with the plan. He tells her she'll need to undergo an initiation, to which she agrees, but he immediately drops his drink on her shoe. To promote the stunt and raise funds, Rod uses his passion for stunts to work parties, corporate get-togethers, and an assortment of other events. He performs these with activities like taping pillows to his body and having a washing machine suspended by a crane to swing and hit him. Despite the lackluster performance, he continues to get work and slowly begins making money towards their goal. One day, he's curious about what his stepbrother, Kevin, is working on when he hears music from the computer in his room. Kevin has been experimenting with editing software, and the results are enough to impress Rod. Rod then has the bright idea to release a film of his stunts and sells tickets to the premiere screening. Kevin pieces the movie with footage of Rod's many stunts and wipeouts. However, when they're opening for a crowd, the audience laughs at Rod as the film depicts mostly his many failures and disastrous training attempts. Rod realizes that the crowd doesn't think he's cool, and they're laughing at him, which enrages him. He runs out of the theater, throwing the projector out of a window, which smashes the car below. Rod is then forced to give the projectionists all the money they've raised to cover the damages and avoid arrest, which was about enough money to cover the major stunt that was supposed to save Frank's life. Discouraged and upset, Rod goes home, and his mother reveals that his father wasn't actually the stuntman she led him to believe he was. She never had the heart to tell him that his father had never died in a stunt. He was actually just a tire shop cashier. The photo he'd been so attached to was just a fan photo, but Rob had made up fantastical stories his whole life. As it turns out, his father died choking on pie during a pie-eating contest he desperately wanted to win. Rod is so upset by the revelation that he decides to give up his stuntman dreams, running dramatically upstairs to rip everything off the walls and then rip up his fake mustache. 
Rod quickly cleans himself up, telling Rico he's a regular dude and that their whole team dynamic was pointless. As they leave, he upsets his crew so much with this revelation that Dave and Rico cry inconsolably, except Dave, who sobers up and walks off fine. Denise gives him a pep talk, saying she'd always been inspired by his childlike wonder and drive to do exactly what he wanted to do. He says he has to quit because he's not legit. However, when he goes to walk away, he's promptly hit by a van. In his bed that night, Rob gets a call from Dave, who wants to go to the hospital. Dave is in bed, clearly having gone straight there after being hit by the van, as he's still in the same outfit. Dave, however, needs to go to the hospital because he took acid after work when a co-worker offered it. While skateboarding, he decided to do some metal work, which flew off and hit him directly in the face. He's still clearly tripping, though, describing what's wrong with Rod, eventually saying it's weird to see him drive a minivan. Dave offers some insightful advice on his drug-induced way out that inspires him to apologize to Kevin. Back home, Rod walks in on Kevin putting on a show for his stuffed animals. They apologize to each other, mostly Rod, for his behavior, but Kevin apologizes about Rod's dad. The two make amends, saying cool beans back and forth. Kevin reveals that the stunt footage he posted online has gone viral. Downloaded by thousands, it's popular online enough to have garnered a sponsor from a local radio station hosted by Barry Pasternak to put on the massive stunt that they'd been saving for. Rod gets the crew back together as the radio station begins setting up the massive grounds for the jump. Barry Pasternak, the owner of the station, explains that this is the last of the AM radio station's money, so a lot is riding on this event going well. Frank and Rod have a heart-to-heart -heart before the event, as Frank says he wants Rod to be the man of the house after he dies. In a moment of vulnerability, Rod asks if he'll respect him for landing the jump. Frank says no, he'll have to beat him in a fight. Rod goes to the lake, getting ready for the event in his own way with Tai Chi and lotion from a local fisherman. While walking to the event, Rod attracts a crowd following him, starting with his crew, slowly gathering more people as they walk, everyone ready to go see his massive, record-breaking jump. However, the group is generally pretty confused by the following, clearly uncomfortable and unsure why people are following them and eventually singing. It quickly goes south, turning into equal parts music and rioting, complete with flipped cars and the National Guard. They escape running, but Rico clearly looted and stole a TV, acting as though he didn't. On the day of the event, the crew gives Rod a new suit, a rock representing Rico's extensive pyrotechnic work, and a motorbike. He gets a kiss from Denise, who finally breaks up with her awful, inattentive, and insensitive boyfriend, Jonathan. When Rod goes to jump off the ramp, the speed of his bike enables him to jump over the buses. However, the motorbike doesn't quite make it. He and his motorcycle are separated about midway through. It smashes through a stage, flying right as Rod lands squarely on the ground. His massive wipeout on the ramp causes Rod to have an unconscious, out-of-body experience, as local radio explains he's like a broken doll. The crew goes running, despite everyone thinking he's likely dead. EMTs are on the scene, ready to bring the would-be stuntman back. Meanwhile, in his head, Rod is in a white space, wearing a white suit, and a few costume food items start wailing at each other. It's not quite the profound experience Dave assumes, but Rod is clearly enjoying it as the taco kills the grilled cheese. Denise's voice brings him back, informing her that the taco won. He's also ready to walk home, despite everyone telling him not to move for fear of internal injuries. He wants to walk away from this, despite all medical advice arguing against that. He can't walk, so the group helps him shuffle up to see the donation screen and see whether or not they did it. As it turns out, the donations have accumulated over the $50,000 goal, meaning he's saved Frank's life as they set out to do from the beginning. Finally, Richardson gets the validation that Rob knows his name, and Ebenezer Scrooge sticks his head out of a bus to say there's a cooked goose for everyone. Six months pass, and Rob has gotten himself ready to fight Frank. He's finally able to grow his facial hair, but Kevin warns him that Frank's heart is stronger than ever. Without the padding from earlier, Rob wails at Frank because he loves him. Frank fights dirty though, throwing knives and going for cheap shots. They stumble out into the yard, crashing into a backyard barbecue with their rowdy fighting, but Rob gets the upper hand, smashing Frank into the hood of his car and demanding Frank say he's the man. Having finally defeated his stepfather, he gains his respect, fist bumming into the air. As the credits finish, Rod is seen at sunset, bowing down to his motorbike. And that's going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this recap as much as we did. If you liked the video and want to look into other movies with us, then be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. 
That way you won't miss a single video.